um, the afterword of this book. Like you talked a lot about like teachers and school being like really important to your development as a writer. But like, what did bring you along this journey to writing? I mean, you said it wasn't something I've been actively working for. At some point it must have been. So what changed? Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, in my website and in my acknowledgements, I talk about my third grade teacher um, who we did night rights. I don't know if it was every Tuesday night yeah. um, or like every other Tuesday night where we got a prompt and we're supposed to bring in, you know, write an answer to this prompt uh, fiction it needs to be like two, you know, handwritten pages. And I, my parents literally taught me to type um, so mm-hmm. that, because I was writing so much. Mm-hmm. And if I wanted to change something instead of ever like putting like a little carrot and like adding a set, I literally would erase everything else that I had written. <laughs> uh, and so they taught me to type in, in third grade so that I could turn in Save like- yourself that drop. Yeah, <laughs> turn in like 14, you know, typed pages of, in response to this prompt. Um, so it was, it's kind of just always been something that I've done. Like, you know, that was so long ago, obviously. So I I can't really remember a time when I wasn't basically making up stories and daydreaming about stories. Um, I did, I talk about a a lot that I, I got into fan fiction and that I wrote Mm -hmm. fan fiction for other, you know, um, I, I always assume everyone knows what fan fiction is, but just in case you take characters yes. or a, and or a world that already exists and like a book or a movie or a TV show and write your own story with them. Um, so yes, yeah, so I did that. I wrote fan fiction for a long time. Um, well, any particular fan fiction specialty? I started an alias long ago. I mean, short. Um, <laughs> um, and regrettably, my wife's always embarrassed that I admit this, but I did write, I did write a fair amount of Glee fan fiction as well. Um, no regrets, right? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Um, but yeah, just I, any, anything, especially TV that I got into, I, I was tended to be writing lots of fan fiction for it. I, I really like viewing stories and I, I view my story this way as well as, just what's canon isn't you know the whole story like what's written Mm -hmm. in in a book or in a movie or whatever obviously doesn't show you everything um and so I loved I loved seeing more to a character or seeing a scene that was had been missing or I just I really like exploring stories and and what more can come from them um so well, I wrote that, fan fiction for a long time. Yeah, well, and that theme is actually really explicit in the text, right? When Joe is working on the script for this, like, kind of Bond-like character, mm-hmm. right? And Emma's like, there's more to this character than that. Like, you know that. So, yeah. I mean, it's really interesting to hear you say that and then, like, <laughs> see that, like, really appear in the book as yeah, well. Yeah, on the page. Yeah, but, um. but also you said that, like, in this, I think, this review or maybe it was twitter i can't remember like that you like characters come to you first right like boss lady yeah it was in in yeah in 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 kirkus it was it was uh i talked about how that i was basically flailing to a friend about (laughs) boss lady and assistant lady well before they had names of joe and emma um so yeah i i used to another thing that i tend to say is that i used to be really afraid that you know, oh, this is the only story that I, that I have. And I'm not going to be, have any more stories to tell after I finish writing this. Um, and I've sort of realized that if you give me any two female characters, I can tell you how they fall in love. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's an amazing skill. We're here I, for it. It's yeah. just, it's just, and it's not, you know, it's not even necessarily intentional. It's, it's just, that's what I like to do. Like, that's my, that's yeah. what I do. I daydream about, about people falling in love. Yeah. Um, and so I, I moved to um, sort of pursuing it um more seriously i i had a previous manuscript that um i did dv pit with and got mm-hmm. like a couple of responses and that was sort of used a pitch con contest as a vehicle to make my because i didn't you know i yeah. i hadn't been doing research on agents to query and things like that i didn't i didn't really know what i was doing <laughs> at the time sure. um it probably was not ready to query at the time with that manuscript um but I got some likes from that. And so I, I sent that manuscript out. Um, and that was, that was just a way to sort of push myself toward, okay, this is what you want to do next. But I wasn't, you know, sometimes I feel bad that I wasn't somebody who, you know, was like, oh, I have, you know, a hundred rejections or 300 rejections, mm. or I've been toiling at this for, you know, a decade. And now finally, because yeah. so much of my, um, 
progression and then I think advancement um, of my writing skill took place in the fan fiction world where I wasn't trying to, where right. I wasn't sitting there getting rejections. Um, so sometimes I, sometimes I kind of feel bad about that. I feel like my, my writing yeah, journey don't feel bad. No. <laughs> has, has seemed more quick. Um, mm -hmm. cause I did, I did DV pit. I was working on a revise and resubmit actually for that other manuscript. Um, when the editor who I was working on it for left the publisher. Okay. Um, so I was sort of floundering and was like, Oh gosh, like I have this other manuscript that I like more and I've kind of wanted to work on, but I had to focus on this cause it was an R and R and I gave basically gave myself permission to work on something to talk about. Um, and uh, with a friend decided to apply to Pitch Wars, um, a, which is a writing mentorship program that I've talked about in a ton of interviews as yeah. well. Um, and yeah, and, and it was like maybe three weeks before That's submissions. Amazing. And I, I did a huge overhaul of, of my uh, first draft, basically, of something to talk about um, and turned it in. And it's still sometimes it's hard, like, it's hard to believe that I got picked, but I did. Um, yeah. And so that was obviously like a big shift in focus from just being like, oh, I love writing and I, you know, write right. books in my head and <laughs> sort of, I sort of, I'm sending them out, but like I had, I had two manuscripts and I was sending out one of them, but I wasn't like focusing on it at all. Um, and then I got, then I got into pitch wars and sort of yeah. quit, quit some other hobbies and, and shifted my focus. Well, and that's really interesting too, because I think that um, it seems that there's so many more ways into publishing with these types of mentorships and you know with the things that happen on Twitter and and so it's like really heartening I I as a critic like kind of see them go by and wonder like does it ever like <laughs> does it ever like what is the result and so yeah. it's really cool to hear like oh no these these things like really work right yeah P pitch wars absolutely like changed my life um both just from shifting my own personal focus but also then giving me a writing community that I didn't really have before. Um, and, you know, mentors, obviously. Mm -hmm. And then I connected with my agent through the Pitch Wars showcase. And then it sort of went, you know, dominoes falling in a line went very quickly from there yeah. um, to, to where we are now. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. So let's talk a little bit about the book. I have a lot of questions about okay. like sort of, I, I mean, I think one of the things I'm, I, I really am interested in hearing you talk more about is, um, I mean, we talked a little bit about like your kind of character comes first for you. Um, but I also thought that a thing that was like really interesting to me was like the Hollywood angle, right? Mm -hmm. So um, was like Joe, for example, based on like anyone in particular or like what kind of research did you do to, to bring like, you know, that Hollywood world alive. Yeah. Um, I, she, I, I don't think she was based on anybody in particular. I tend to tell people because some people don't know what a showrunner is, which is Joe's job. Right. So I tend to tell people like a Shonda Rhimes type, yeah. um, even though it's not, I didn't base her on, on Shonda Rhimes. Um, but yeah, I actually did a ton of research for the Hollywood side of things. Um, I have a friend who is a PA uh, or was with The Walking Dead mm. um, and a couple other friends who do various things um, either related or tangentially related to, to Hollywood. So I did a lot of Facebook messaging and text messaging and, and, and just asking tons of questions, um, including, you know, a ton of things that didn't end up in the book at all. Um, but just sort of for my background knowledge so that I felt like I could make it feel more real. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, my friend, my friend who worked on The Walking Dead connected me to somebody who was more on a director path um, so that I could ask questions about that and, and go in that direction as well. Um, so yeah, a lot of my research tends to be getting a hold of people I know or who know somebody who is connected somehow um, and talking about whatever I'm writing. Um, like Emma also is Jewish and mm -hmm. that that was something that I was sort of wavering on. I, I wasn't sure if if she was going to be Jewish or not. And when I, you know, sort of officially decided she was, I took a 
took a couple friends. I took a friend out to coffee, you know, I texted with mm-hmm. another friend and I also, I, I was fairly active um, on social media asking people like, Hey, like, will you talk to me about this? And just asking them everything from, you know, what are your family traditions? Like, just tell, tell me about these things, mm-hmm. just stuff that because I grew up very, I guess, loosely Christian, um, but also within a very Christian society, to be honest, um, yeah. you know, I'm, I can, I could write a ton of different Christmas traditions because I know en- enough people who have different ones and I'm aware mm-hmm. of them. Um, and I didn't have as much knowledge of that, um, for Judaism and things like that. Um, so yeah, I just, I really prefer to, you know, obviously I did research, like, obviously I Google write things too, sure. <laughs> like, of course. Sure. Um, but I well, think the, the better information comes from talking to people. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's interesting you say that. So my sister-in-law writes for TV and I actually called her in the middle of the day because I was like, one of the things I was really interested in as a reader about this book is that it's Hollywood, but like the glamour of Hollywood is really um, like incidental and also kind of a pain right like like joe going to the like the stag awards is like Mm -hmm. a pain in the ass for her you know and and i love like there's a detail about how like her most famous dress had pockets and i was like yes right but and so in that way like it's a real like um like the work of hollywood is sitting in rooms and working on scripts Mm -hmm. and being on sets and being annoyed by being on sets and so I thought it was really interesting that you, it's a, like Hollywood, but not in any way like Hollywood glamour. Yeah. Right? And was that like, what do you think that lent the text in terms of like who these characters were? Yeah, I think, I think in anything that I write, I want, you know, my characters are just people like in the, in the same way that anyone who actually exists, who works in Hollywood is, is just a person. Um, so I, I want to show, yes, I'm showing their life, but I want to show their life f- more from the inside. So as you know, where we might watch award shows or whatever and be like, oh, look at the red carpet, look at this. Oh my gosh, everyone looks so pretty. Um, being there is a, is a different experience. Um, and we did get some of Emma's confusion yeah. at being, <laughs> confusion and surprise at being there and, and what it was like for a newcomer, as well as seeing it from someone who's been doing it for, you know, decades. Forever, right. Exactly. Um, so I, yeah, I just, I think that there is obviously, a, can be a lot of glamour in Hollywood. And I think there's some of that in the book as well. Um, but I do want to show it more from the inside of, of each character um, rather than, rather than from an outsider's point of view of Hollywood. Yeah. Um, a, a kind of, so it's not, I feel bad because we haven't really talked about Joe and Emma yet, but we're kind of on Hollywood. So <laughs> did you like, so there's kind of a me too plot, right? Mm-hmm. So Emma is, um, propositioned in a, I mean, essentially is harassed, yeah. right? By a, a male director who's supposed to kind of almost act as a mentor. And, um, did you, I'm curious about like, whether or not you always wanted to tackle this as a potential issue or if you felt like a like right a hollywood book kind of just, like needed that given yeah that. I, so how did that come into the to the plot i actually um wrote it before sort of the explosion of the mm-hmm. of the me too movement um obviously me the me too movement has actually been around for a lot longer than i think we as the general public tend to think about it um but yeah i actually wrote that part of the plot before Harvey Weinstein and everything yeah. that, that came from that and Time's Up and all of that. Um, so I didn't, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't thinking, oh, this has just happened, so I need to put it in the plot. But I think it also right. goes to show that it was, it, it, it's kind of known also that that's something that women deal with, especially within, yeah. within Hollywood uh, specifically as well. Um, how it came about was more, I, I just, it's funny because I distinctly remember feeling bad that I was going to do this to my character. Um, sort of when I came up with it, I was like, oh, this, you know, it feels very terrible to say, but like this solves a plot problem. Right. Um, and it feels terrible to be like, oh, I'll just have my character be harassed to solve a plot problem. Um, but that is, I mean, that is honestly how it came about was I was working out, you know, issues with the plot. And I was like, oh, well, 
you know, yeah. this could happen. Um, it could, right. And it I just, yeah. And, and I, I think it, you know, I do think it's obviously realistic, but, but I just, I distinctly remember the moment I thought of it and being like, oh, that's going to mm. work, but I feel bad. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think it's also though, there's an interesting corollary, like to me as a reader, when earlier in the book, Joe fields a phone call from, I don't know, like the network, right? Like, so she's the showrunner and the network calls because, you know, you're dating your assistant and is this a good look? And and her ability, like her power mm-hmm. is such that she can essentially like shut that down. Yeah, shut that down, exactly. Right, whereas Emma is like can say no, but then doesn't like feel like there's a place for her to like kind mm-hmm. of move that football forward. And mm-hmm. so I thought it was really interesting because the book... I mean, not just like within their relationship or their power dynamics, but the power dynamics of Hollywood are such a big part of this and how each one of these women kind of fits into that, like as an mm-hmm. assistant, as a showrunner, as women, um, as, as lesbians. I mean, so that part was really interesting to me too. And I, you tackle a lot of big power dynamics in the book, both external and internal. Mm-hmm. And so like is that like generally interesting to you or is that like something, I mean, so talk, I mean, it's like age, it's yeah. yeah right. There's a lot going yeah. on. Um, p- power dynamics, I would say are absolutely gen- like just in general, interesting um, to me to explore, especially within a romance. Um, and I do really like, I really like power dynamic relationships where the person who sort of should have all the power and technically does have all the power is also like just kind of a mess for the one who shouldn't <laughs> um that's those are my favorite types of relationships so that, right, that yeah, yeah gen, like generally that is is holds interest for me um and yeah that does come about in a lot of ways and and the age difference that joe joe is older joe is mm-hmm. significantly more experienced within hollywood um but the, and that also just gives them they just come from such different places um and i really enjoyed exploring that that they still you know they obviously still come together mm-hmm. um and so i enjoyed exploring how they each you know get to get to each other and get to what they want to do and what they want to be mm-hmm. um while coming from such different places um emma's really the you know sort of young somewhat new to Hollywood still still definitely in the same way that when she shows up at the SAG Awards you know she's she's sort of blown away by everything um so still kind of entranced a little bit by Hollywood even as she deals with the you know the day-to-day workings of it um whereas Joe is somebody who has been there for so long that you know a lot of it is does end up being a pain to her um Mm -hmm. but she's also been so successful already that she has so much power through that Mm -hmm. um and in her like in her background you know she started as a child actress um and started in tv eventually moved as an actress into movies um and then sort of got shut out from the industry um for calling out racism Mm -hmm. and so she has she has just been in so many places in relationship in relation to this industry um and it, it was enjoyable to write her deciding how she wanted to. That's my cat trying to <laughs> knock over my computer. Sorry. Of it. <laughs> um, but deciding how she, how she wanted, like taking the steps and being active about it. Um, I think sort of before, before Emma, um, Joe didn't necessarily care enough to be proactive in, in how people were seeing her or what she wanted to do or where she wanted to fit in. She was, it was about the work for her. Um, and it's still, you know, it still is with Emma, but she also has a, a new motivation um, that she didn't have before. Well, and she's, in, she's also an interesting character, I think, in that she, um, you know, she's not closed off from people. I mean, she has her best friend, you know, she's closer to her mom, although it's dad who appears on, on page. And, you know, but it's also, there's a way in which she, um, like, it's, this relationship is, like, new to her, too, even mm-hmm. though she's so much older, and so it's, like, even though she's older and the boss, right, like, sh- you know, 
Emma really like gets to her. Yeah. You know, and it's. it's yeah. She, you she, know, I, I, it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't ever describe her as closeted um, because she's, she's out to everyone in her family. You know, she's out right. to her best friend. Um, she would say that she's out to the people who matter to her, uh, but she's not publicly out. Mm -hmm. um, and she's not out to Emma for a lot, I, potentially a majority of the book. Right. Uh, <laughs> well, there's this one really, f like, I, it made me actually laugh when, like, sort of it goes down with the paparazzi or whatever. And, and then, you know, Evelyn says to Joe, like, well, how did Emma react? And she's like, well, she kind of accidentally came out to me. Yeah. Right? And they're like, <laughs> you know, like, just sort of, I, it's really charming. I mean, I think it felt really grounded. I, yeah. I think in, I don't know, like, real like real kind of people right I, I I love that that I love hearing that <laughs> that's okay. great um but yeah it, I think it also again shows a, a big difference between the two of them where Joe is so so used to controlling her emotions mm -hmm. and not and not letting other people see them and Emma is much 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 more of an open book and so when Joe suggests when Emma's like you know we should we should say something and say that this isn't true what if I want to date somebody and Joe's response is like, oh, well, like if a man doesn't believe you when you say that you're not dating me, right. you shouldn't date him. And she's like, well, I didn't say it was a man, Joe. It was great. <laughs> and it then was... she's like, oh, crap. Like maybe I should have. And it's just. Yeah. I, I also obviously love that part. It was um, great. It was really, it was just like a really oh, funny oh. scene. It it really made me giggle like a little bit. Like it felt like <laughs> That's a great. her being like, oh God, what did I do? Yeah. Which there's quite a bit of it in the book. Like, right. Like them. I mean, because the thing about power, I think, is also like boundaries, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like watching both of them like set and respect each other's boundaries. And that's something that like really evolves in a real like grown up way throughout the book, for lack of a better word, right? Mm -hmm. And I could tell that's important to you as a writer that like, for example, they don't, spoiler alert, really get together until she's- it's the slowest of slow burn. <laughs> it's very slow burn, everybody. Um, it's it's a slow slow burn, but it's it like there's so much emotional work that you do mm -hmm. that I think it's really important. And the thing I also thought was really interesting in the Kirkus review that's kind of related to this is you said um, that like one thing you're really trying to do that's important to you is to talk about the complexity of queer desire. So how do you like what are the the ways in the book that you think you were really like exploring that yeah um like what you said with bound about boundaries first of all is is you know these are two women who are professional and who know each other in a professional capacity and even as they grow closer to each other they still know each other in a professional capacity um and so that is definitely a boundary for them that is hard for them to you know approach and and recognize and emma when when she sort of figures thing figures things out about how she feels she's still like but how would i ever know if if joe felt the way that way about me because right. she you know joe is professional and wouldn't do anything with with a you know employee um so those boundaries are, are part of the power part of the power dynamics that they really do have to deal with and that's why it's such a slow burn because they have to deal with those mm -hmm. and overcoming those and figuring those things out in a way that they are still comfortable and they still know that the other person's comfortable. Mm -hmm. um, and that is part of sort of that, you know, complexity of queer desire. I think that a lot of times um, queer women have a, they're sort of a like predatory lesbian stereotype mm -hmm. of, you know, oh, like that, you know, if she's yeah. a lesbian, she can't be in the locker room with us because she's gonna, you know, look at us while we're changing, um, which it's like, no, because she's not a predator. So it's not something she's going to do actually. Um, but, but I think that that is um, somewhat ingrained uh, in queer women. Um, I can't speak for, I never thought myself a queer man, so I can't, <laughs> can't speak right. to them, but um, it, it is ingrained in queer women in a way that, you know, you don't know Besides, you know, besides all the boundaries of knowing each other in a professional capacity and, you know, Joe being Emma's boss and all of that, there's the boundary of, I don't even know if she's into women mm -hmm. um, and that you don't want to ever come across, uh, you don't want to be a predatory person. So you'd never want to 
do something that makes someone else uncomfortable. Um, and that can be, I think, just harder for queer people because they do have that stereotype on top of them that makes them worry even more. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that both Joe and Emma experience that. Um, and Joe, Joe especially because she, she is in such a, you know, relative position of power to Emma. She, Joe is very worried about any sort of taking advantage in any way, right. um, which comes well, into that, that, that predatory lesbian, as well as all of the other sure. <laughs> power dynamics at play there. Well, and it's true before the situation with this man and it's, but it's more so after, right? Because yeah. one of the things I, that I really, it's really interesting. Okay. So I'm going to talk a little bit about my journey with Joe because at the beginning, um, she is really insistent, right? So basically the paparazzi essentially like presume that they are dating after they're kind of caught you know, like a, a, a picture that really captures a kind of intimacy neither of them even really realize, yeah. right? And um, Emma's like, we should say we're not dating. And Joe's like, I have never in 30 years said anything about my love life and I'm not going to start now. And she's really insistent. And I really felt like I wanted her to take a little bit better care of Emma at that moment. Like she just, I almost felt like she didn't even quite understand why it was a big deal. Like just ignore it, it'll go away not realizing right that like emma didn't have that armor that mm -hmm, she had mm -hmm. um but then after the thing happens with this dude she's amazing and she also is not only just working to protect emma and really respecting emma's boundaries but also like how can we set up something that will help women in this position in the future mm -hmm. and i found myself thinking like about that idea that you were talking about earlier like the things are underneath the surface right like so she seems a little like a little um I don't know like not as warm I guess maybe at the beginning like just really like don't worry about it, it'll go away mm -hmm. and then we see in fact that she's so careful and thoughtful and I just thought that was like really nice character I'm gonna I praise you like really you. good <laughs> character work on your part to sort of show like really like I was like wow that's a really big but it wasn't a big change. It was just like a reveal, right? Mm -hmm. Like you're unwrapping those layers as an author. Um, and that's got to be hard to do. I mean, so you said you started with characters and it starts as boss lady and assistant lady, right? But it becomes this. Yeah. So, you know, how, how do you, how, like, what were, how do you like kind of get characters there yeah. as a writer? I think that, that like for that specifically, I think that, you, that you're right that Joe isn't taking it very seriously at the beginning um, in part for, you know, the same reason that like going to the SAG Awards is a pain, you know, it just, it, it does, she doesn't, I don't think realize at the beginning that this is a departure from sort of her normal life, um, which is, which, you know, is when you're, when you're writing a book, that's, you know, that's what the book has to be. It has to be a departure from, from these characters sort of regular lives. And I don't think Joe necessarily catches on to that. Um, so she's like, okay, ignore it. They'll, they'll stop talking about it. It's not a big deal. Um, which is, to be honest, how she has dealt with her love life for 30 years in Hollywood. Right. Um, so she doesn't think that anything's changed. So she really doesn't take it seriously. Doesn't sort of put too much into it. Um, and I think also for me, one of the things about Joe, um, that I, I love most, um, is, is, as you said, everything that's going on under the surface. Um, you know, there's tons of things that I, as the writer, think about Joe that I hope make the page, but don't <laughs> necessarily, right. um, you know, in moments that like, oh, I, I write something specific and I'm like, I hope somebody realizes what this means, even though I haven't clearly put it on the page. But that's because Joe as a narrator would, would not clearly put it on the page, that's even to herself, even telling, you know, herself what happened would not Right. you know, clearly be like, and then I watched Emma like lick ice cream and felt something. <laughs> um, I, had feelings. Yeah. I had feelings about it. Um, and so I think that part of, part of her character growth is, is allowing herself to, to feel those things. Um, because for how long she's been in Hollywood, she has had to pretend not to have feelings. She has had to hide certain feelings. You know, she, she, may have been in touch with her feelings this whole time, um, but not 
open to admitting them, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I just, I love Joe. I, it always yeah. feels weird to, to, to talk about your own characters and just be like, oh, I love her so much, but yeah. I do. <laughs> well, it must be like, are you still writing stories for them? Are you fanficking? Are you fanficking <laughs> your own characters? I, I, tw I tweeted something about this yesterday or yes, sometime this week. And you said like, yeah. writes down more questions yeah. Oh, yeah. For, like, for tonight. Right? Um, you know, I just, I, as I said at the beginning, like, you know, stories don't, exist to me only as what happened you know what what you were given as a as a reader or as you know somebody oh a viewer or anything depending on what type of media you're looking working in um so even though i wrote this you know and this is the story that i've told of course i still i still do think of them as as what's what's happening next or um i'm not currently writing anything for them but i have written I have written a couple of things, including like, you know, the interview that mm. that got Emma the job to begin with and things like that. Cause I I really enjoy imagining characters in, in any situation that they could be in. Right. Um, and especially these two characters who are so close to me, close to my heart. Um, I I I can't imagine that I mean, I'm sure it will happen at some point. Hopefully I'll write too many books that <laughs> I'll have all of too many characters in my head to write. You meet the authors on these you're two. like, I don't remember why that yeah, was. And book. you're like, let me tell you. I saw a <laughs> once at um, a library here in Chicago and she like mentioned a character and got it wrong and the audience corrected <laughs> her. And I was like, that as an author must be like the biggest thrill to be like these folks in this room know my people my work yeah right it like to that level of detail it was actually really it was great it was a great moment yeah. you could tell she was really like charged up by two so i yeah. i definitely wish that upon you yeah absolutely I, I i would love to as much as i love them i would love to write too many books to i would love to get something wrong about this book at some point in my life yeah because <laughs> i just and don't remember like no <laughs> that's not what happened this guy was the bad guy um, um but yeah but yeah i i definitely is currently still think about you know this is what happens in the future this is you know emma i guess i, I don't want to spoil things but things that happen and, and where their careers take them in their in the future is something that it interests me um yeah. that i, well, that's I like what, to think like, about your author newsletter is for because mm -hmm. then exactly you send those out as little shorts and everyone's like oh my god exactly they wrote the coolest like news I, for them. <laughs> I do have um when i was writing it um you know, it is, it is an extreme slow burn um, for many reasons. It deals with all of the power dynamics. I think it, mm -hmm. I think it needed to be a big slow burn, but nonetheless, I do have like a, a little fan fiction. That's like, what if they kissed here instead? And what if they, I, I have like four yeah. different versions of their first kiss because I wanted them to kiss, you know, hopefully just as much as readers do when they read it. Oh, um, you get to like smash, you get to smash the Barbie's faces together exactly. however many times you want to, right? The rest exactly. of us are like, wait, where? Like when the phone rang, I was like, <laughs> you have got to be kidding me. This is like classic, like, like, you know, kiss interrupting moment. Yeah. And it's, I was like, oh, I do um, that, but that that uh, that like four four times they could have had a first kiss is definitely going to be a an author <laughs> newsletter thing at some point. Perfect, um, Meryl. What are you working on? Are you like working on a next book? Like, what's next? I have. I'm waiting for edits back on a book okay. two with Berkeley. Um, okay. That I'm really excited about currently. I'll let you know once I get edits if I'm Fair. continue to be excited about it. Um, but yeah, so I'm waiting for edits back on that. And then okay. I'm sort of okay. beginning to brainstorm where we go next. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, none of them are, just for the record, none of them are, it's not a sequel to something to talk about. The My second book with Berkeley, it is a different world, new okay. characters, all that jazz. Okay. Um, it's interesting because I, yeah, like, I guess it's true. Like you didn't, you know the the plight of the romance reader is that every secondary character you want their book yeah right and but a lot of the secondary characters and something to talk about were already attached right <laughs> and so i was like damn Meryl. i um yeah that's you know you gotta do what so you gotta do <laughs> when we went on, when we first went on submission my agent asked me you know do you have any sequel ideas for this um and i said 
I, I have one, but I'd have to kill someone's husband. So maybe we shouldn't do that. <laughs> That's rough. That is a rough road. To and that out. was the end. She did not yeah, ask me right? more about it. She was like, okay, I just won't even mention that. To anybody. We're just going to let that go. It's going to yeah. be like the coach of the little league team, like a real <laughs> ancillary, the baker, the new baker at the bakery or whatever. Yeah. Um, one of the things I'm really interested in um, is, so I think another thing you did, I enjoyed in this book, and I think a lot of romance readers enjoy, are the secondary characters. And in particular, Emma and Joe both have like a, a best friend. I mean, I guess in Emma's case, it's her sister. But Still best friend, though. Yes, yeah. absolutely. So, um, and they are like a little bit of a friendship, you know, Joe then, and you know, it's kind of complicated. I won't mm-hmm. get into it, but um, why was it important for you to like add in that layer of like sort of support for each of those characters because they really were important to the book not mm-hmm. just like to kind of fly in and you know oh they have a friend but like really foundationally important to kind of them even getting together mm-hmm. right yeah I think that especially in you know in a book like this where the the two main characters are like we don't have feelings for each other I don't know what anyone's <laughs> talking about feelings, not deal. Feelings. Um, <laughs> I think that I think that that having a you know having somebody there to be like, oh, wow, I see the way you're looking at her right now. Yeah. Um, is, is helpful, like just plot wise, but also, you know, it, it was important to me that in the same way that sort of, I didn't write too much of the glamoury side of Hollywood, you know, it was important to me to have it be real. Um, so these are two people who, you know, would have that support. Um, and that is something that, that is important to both of them. Um, and I really enjoyed writing so many different female characters um, all together in one book and, and how they interact and all of that. Um, and Chantal, who is a, is a smaller female character, mm-hmm. but um, works with Joe, it, you know, it was, it was also great to write. It was just, I really like being able to explore different facets of, of female characters and have them all in one book together and show strength in different ways um you know joe and emma obviously are very different um but they are all both also you know do have their own power and their own agency and and experience that in different ways and show that in different ways um that was that was enjoyable as a writer and and also important to me as a writer to do Okay, what, I have I have a lot of interesting questions that hurt me. So I want to. I'm kind of curious to talk about class because one of the things that's really interesting about the book is that Joe obviously has a lot of money, right? A lot of money, yeah, she's been in Hollywood forever. I mean, she's been making money hand over fist since she was 13, and yet there's not a lot of like conspicuous consumption in the book. And in mm-hmm. fact, the way Joe does use her, her money is often to help people like she has a really interesting ethos it's not like i'm gonna make a gates foundation right it's like i'm gonna help emma's sister hire one more worker for the Mm -hmm. bakery right Mm -hmm. so how did you decide i mean that's but that's like an unusual choice for romance right where you know we often equate ever since i think the downturn in 50 shades like monetary wealth with a kind of safety net Mm -hmm. so how did you decide to approach joe's money right in this way um as as someone who isn't particularly a huge fan of capitalism um <laughs> it's you know yeah i'm not i'm not somebody who could write um you know like a billionaire romance and mm-hmm. just have somebody who is just filthy rich and and throwing money around that's not a type of character who who i'm particularly interested in um and so it wasn't it wasn't going to be the type of character who I wrote. Um, but obviously like Joe does have a ton of money. So I did sort of have to explore what she would do with it. Um, and, and how she would try to use it for good. Um, and I mean, of course she is, you know, she is a multimillionaire still that I don't think that's explicit, but yeah, sure. Right. Pretty obviously. Cause she's, she's yeah. been a star for a long time and, and making a lot of money for a long time. Um, but yeah, it, it was important. That was, money was not a power dynamic that I explored right. or particularly wanted to in this book. 
Um, and, and I wanted that also to be a facet of Joe that, that could show how much she cared about people without being, I don't know if overt is the right word. Um, but I mentioned at some point in the book that, yeah. you know, Joe, Joe has enough power that she negotiates pow- that she negotiates her cruise contract along with her own um, right. when she's negotiating things because it's important to her. It's not a, just about, you know, oh, I get paid for I'm my right. work. It's right. I want to make sure that I take care of all of these people um, who are involved in putting together whatever show or movie or whatever that I'm working on. Um, and that's that's something that I think is is sort of an understated uh, mm-hmm. hopefully <laughs> way of, yeah. of showing how much she does indeed, you know, care without, without being, um, extravagant, I guess about it. Well, and that was like, honestly, kind of it was around this when I ended up calling my sister-in-law because I was like, I feel like we're so used to seeing the Hollywood power broker as being abusive, mm-hmm. right? Like sort of regardless, right? Like showrunners are like, you know, that guy wrote the West Wing or whatever. And, and, um, names. Um, and I thought it was really interesting that Joe so explicitly like operates in a different way, but not just with Emma, with, Mm -hmm. with everybody. And, and I, I thought it was, I mean, in that part, I was kind of like, you know, I'm so used to seeing this other like version of what Hollywood is like. And, you know, and my sister-in-law was like, no, that's, like a lot of people do the things that are being described. Like a lot of people are like, I want my assistant to like move on and have a better mm-hmm. job. And, you know, I thought that, so I thought it was really interesting to provide like this sort of behind the scenes Hollywood that was not built on, you know. I think, yeah, I, I think both, both like in Hollywood, but also just in general, I think that too often people in power are, are often shitty to people <laughs> below them and and that's you know not not a fun situation to be in um it doesn't make them an endearing character in any way um and yeah whether whether it's hollywood or or you know not just your your boss at whatever right. office job you have where you know they're they're horrible to you or horrible to other people but nice to you you know just mm-hmm. um that's that's so frustrating in real life um and i wanted to I wanted to show Joe being a, a real person <laughs> again, yeah. um, who does, who does definitely care about other people. Um, and who she's not, I think a lot of times, um, especially in Hollywood, uh, we get the, Oh, well, we have to put up with this terrible human because they're so they're, they have so much right. talent or there's such geniuses. Um, and I, I wanted to do the opposite of that of yeah. that people didn't people don't want to work with Joe Jones because she's so brilliant and then you know they'll go off on their career and have this this great foundation they do want that but they also want to work with her because they want to work with her as a person it's not yeah. just you know it's not just talent it's not like oh suffer through you know a year or two on this show and then you can you know use it as a leg up to somewhere else it's that the the shows that she puts together and then her production company puts together are important to her and all of the people there are important to her. Yeah. So Emma is really an interesting character because she's 27, I think turns 28 in the course of the book. Um, In some ways, like, were you playing with the like kind of millennial trope at all with her? Not intentionally. Okay. <laughs> I mean, as a millennial and writing a millennial, probably. Yeah. Um, but I, I wasn't something I intentionally did. Okay. I mean, and I guess I mean that because she's like, to me, she was so, um, she's like thoughtful. She is like, knows who she is. She gets, she has supportive parents, but you know, there's a way in which she's like sort of struggling to figure out who she is. And, you know, in particular with her sister, she sort of envies her sister's mm-hmm. certainty right? Like my sister has always known what she wanted to do. And here I am like still trying to figure it out. And it felt really like real to me that she was um, like that, that was like a struggle for her. Right. And I just thought that was kind of interesting because I think, you know, look like the millennial, like whatever, like those stereotypes are, she doesn't really 
you know, she's not like bratty or anything, but that sense of like, what am I going to do? Yeah. Right. Who am I going to be? And I thought that I just thought her character was interesting because, but yet she's just as sure as of herself, like kind of foundationally as Joe mm-hmm. is. Yeah. I think, I think for Emma, she, you know, she has a fear of, of what comes next. Um, Mm -hmm. so, you know, she is, you know, she, she, she knows who she is. She's happy with her job. She's supported by her parents. Everything is good. And so, um, there's, there's definitely a fear of moving out of that comfort zone. Um, and I think that is, is sort of the big thing that she needs to overcome personally. Um, because she, you know, she's, she's happy where she is. She doesn't, the reason that she starts thinking about where she's going next is because Joe is saying, okay, where do you want to go next? Let's, let's, I'll move this along for you. Um, sort of again, to Joe is, you know, the older and wiser mentor type Mm -hmm. Um, because Joe has, Joe has been through all of this and has moved through different parts of Hollywood and, and, and is sort of trying to help her, her assistant do the same. Um, Whereas Emma is, feels like she's, you know, set and happy where she is and doesn't need to, to right. advance. And I think also doesn't necessarily trust that, that she can, you know, she, she's very good at her job and mm-hmm. proud of being good at her job. And what happens if you go to a new job and then you're not good at it? Um, right. That's definitely sort of the, the fears that she has. So she wants, she wants to keep being good, keep being happy, you know, to right. have her good she has a good life and she doesn't want to do anything that would lose lose that right that um, would like disrupt that yeah yeah disrupt that in, in any way and i think that i think that that it's different necessarily than the sort of standard millennial because for for me at least there's a lot of not being in a you know job that you want or not being paid mm-hmm. enough or not you know there's a lot of other right. issues that come with that um whereas Emma really does have that foundation of yeah she has you know everything she needs and she needs to go the next step up the pyramid to you know push herself right. out of her comfort zone and get the next thing yeah well and I guess maybe that's what like kind of drove my question is like her sense that like, well, I'm safe and I'm good and I have a good job. So is like wishing for more or dreaming for more a a mistake, right? Mm -hmm. Like there's that sort of tension, I think, in her. Um, And it's really interesting, I think, the way Joe like kind of shows her that. But we also see the skills Emma has. I mean, Emma is really foundational in helping Joe push past some things in the writing she's doing, right? So it's like they're each bringing something to the table. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's oh, really absolutely. like a meeting of equals, even though there are these external like power things. Yeah. Um, okay. I obviously, I thought the book was terrific and I hope people watching it think they are too, but I would love to talk about like, I don't know, like romance in general, right? Yeah, like, I mean, what have you been reading lately? Are there things that you want to tell us about that we should totally check out? We, we just picked up today. We picked up Take a Hint, Danny Brown. Yeah, that um, just came out today, right? Which, yesterday, yesterday, yeah. yeah. Um, which I I have like 20 things on my to-be-read list before it, but I really want my, my wife has already started reading it and I keep watching her read it and you know, my eye twitching a little bit. Um, I just I just started um, Queen Move um, by oh, Kennedy. Oh, yeah, by Kennedy Wine what's her last name kennedy ryan yes although thank i'm you. like i'm like why is anybody asking me about anybody's name <laughs> no that sounds right uh i was just like i don't i i often refer to like think of people as their twitter handles oh yeah so I th- sure. i'm like Ke- by kennedy writes and i'm like that just that's not right <laughs> um, but uh i just just started that i'm very excited to you know everyone has has mm. raved about it um so i'm really thrilled to get to read that i have real men knit um that I got, I got like the ebook from the library. And then I was like, but I actually want to own this. You don't hard. get so like I the got... Berkeley hookup, but you don't get like a box. I'm sure of... I could. I have, I, I haven't asked. I did. I don't know if any of them are watching, but when I took over their Instagram, I mentioned <laughs> that I would love an advanced copy of Denise, uh, Denise Williams book, how to fail at flirting. And they haven't yeah. given it to me yet. So I'll mention it again here. I think, yeah, part of me feels like I, I, there's, these are like the assumptions the rest of us have, right? Is that like, 
once you have the Berkeley sweet Berkeley contract, then like you just get a box every month that has like all that the would be lovely. Um, I mean, hello. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm sure that I could explicitly ask and, and get sure. what I wanted. I, um, I hate asking too. So I feel but like yeah, yeah, I just, I'm instead like, I just keep mentioning it in all of these, <laughs> these, like you just know, real, like, yeah. Just, yeah. If you wanted to, you yeah. could give me that. Um, yeah. So I, so I, I have both on my Kindle, a like library e-copy, I should probably return it of Real Man, Re- mm. Real Men Knit. And then we just went and bought the hardcover last week or not hardcover, excuse me. The, um, yeah, physical it's a, copy. Right. Right. Um, so I'm excited to, I just, there's so much good stuff to be yeah. reading and I'm not, I'm honestly not doing a great job reading in the pandemic. I think that's a lot of us. Yeah. I will say I have found listening to audio to be a real, I, um, during the pandemic, I realized I enjoy working on puzzles, which I did not know before. Okay. <laughs> and I will, um, like do a puzzle and listen to an audio book okay. because I feel like it also like keeps me off screens, which is yeah. like an important part of my own mental health routine. So yeah. Um, yeah, someone's like, oh, I do puzzles on an iPad. And I was like, look, the whole That's point what, yeah. <laughs> is to not be able to click over to the Twitter machine. Yeah. I, I will say just to hype my own book again, I really like the audiobook uh, for something to talk about. I am not an, an audiobook listener, mostly because my ADHD has me like, yeah. oh, have I missed a chapter? Have I missed right. one word? I don't know. I have no idea what's going on anymore. <laughs> um, but when we got, we got like a copy of my audiobook and I, getting to listen to someone perform the really words cool. that you wrote yeah. is very fun. It must um, be. Especially because I think that a lot of the, a, a lot of the emotion that, that I put into the book and that I, that I think is there on the page, yeah. it's really nice to hear someone perform it yeah. because then you can hear it. It's not just, you know, you're not, you're not having to imagine it as you're reading. You're like, oh, like. There is a lot of yearning yes. <laughs> happening right now. Yes. Um, so I love that. But I, I, the trick of, of doing a puzzle while listening to an audiobook might yeah. take enough of my brain, but not too much that maybe I could focus. Here's my other tip, which is like everyone tips by Jen Reed's Romance, is I, I read really fast. Like I, it's my superpower, but it also means I don't really pay much attention to like languages I should. So I often almost exclusively reread an audio. So these are like books I loved and I know, and I listen to them. And I often am like, God, the scene or this language or these words. So I would also say that could be another, of my other right. tips is yeah. I honestly, I did I, for a long time in during these pandemic times, I was not reading at all. And then yeah. I like tore through the worst best man. Yeah. Um, it's, it's true. And, and, and then I did, then I did like, you know, a book a day for three days or something. And then I went three weeks again without reading a single, like, those are the only ends of the spectrum I seem to be on. Uh, it's strange too, to me. I feel like I've done the same thing. Um, rereading is contemporary sometimes are such a contemporaries feel almost like fantasy now. Yeah. Right. Like you can meet somebody and like touch them. Yeah. You go, to, you go to a restaurant and a coffee shop. It's unrealistic. <laughs> right. So I definitely feel like I have some of that, that business too, but yeah. I also have been finding rereading uh, historicals. I mean, I just, I just feel like for me, it's like doing it in a way that I can't click over to yeah. social media or, you know, whatever terrible things are happening. Yeah. Then I can kind of do it. Have you been, have you been reading romance forever? I have actually been, yes, my, I, <laughs> yes, my, when I was in middle school, I would go to my grandmother's house and like hang out as people did. Like you just go get shunted off to grandma's house. And one day I found a bag of books in her basement and they were remaindered. And for like those of you at home that don't know what this means, like category romances, like silhouette desire or whatever, um, at the end of the month at like, if they don't sell this is not at like Love Sweet Arrow, but this is like at like Target or whatever. They rip the covers off and report them to the publisher as destroyed. And then they're just supposed to like recycle them or whatever. Cause they're not worth like returning. And there's a box of remainder, a bag full of remainder romance novels. And I would read anything. And I was like, I don't know what these are, but I'm going to read it. And I was like, <laughs> but you know what? Like you looking back so much of my formative like I remember like really loving the Empire Strikes Back because Han Solo and Princess Leia kiss 
And I was like seven, right? (laughs) I mean, but like, so my entire life, I've been really like into the, like, like, you know, mashing the Barbie's faces together. So yeah, I have a lot of romance years under my belt. See, I am like, I am newer to the genre itself um, Mm -hmm. because I, I, I was in fan fiction for so long and because, you know, I, I've talked about this a lot, but I grew up in sort of more of a literary elitism of like, oh, romance Mm -hmm. novels that are like trash or guilty pleasure, you know, you don't like not good basically, Um, which is obviously incorrect. Um, But so I was like, okay, like can't read those. So I'll just read like a hundred thousand words of two two people falling in love on my computer that nobody knows I'm reading. And I don't, I never, I didn't think about it. Uh, for the longest time, I wasn't thinking like, oh, I'm reading romances. I was just right. like, oh, I'm reading fix. This is a, yeah, this is nothing. Different. Yeah. Um, and yeah, but no, I mean, I was reading and writing romance for, like from long before, like well before I had my first kiss. I, I'm i sure that I wrote my first sex scene before I had my first kiss. A hundred percent sure. Of that. That's amazing. And I'm sure it was awful. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, it's, well, for sure. It does need to have a little gas in the tank. Yeah. Don't you mean that? Um, you know, I think it's really fascinating though, because I, I think all, all romance readers, I think regardless of when they come to the genre, go on that journey mm-hmm. of like, kind of, you know, it's like, you know how they have like the five stages of grief or whatever. <laughs> I feel like there's like the five stages of like romance reading like and, you know, like stage number one is like amazement. You're like, Whoo! <laughs> right. And then like stage number two is like hiding. Yeah. Right. And then like stage number three is like a ca- cautious, you know what I mean? Like, but there's all these ways. And then you get to my age where I'm just like, yeah, that's what I'm reading. F yeah. off. You, yeah. what's exactly. Wrong? You yeah. Screw They're you. This is what, I mean, yeah. my son is 17 and I leave romances all over the house, like hoping that he will pick one up and he does not. <laughs> and now I'm I, like straight up to the point where I'm like, Hey, like, don't you want to take these to your friends? <laughs> <laughs> no, the answer is no. Yeah. Yeah, I can't imagine. I can't imagine my brother at 17 and his and his buddies reading a, a bunch of romance novels. Well, I think it's too bad because I do too. I think that I think honestly they probably would have enjoyed them. But. Yeah, yeah. Well, and I and that's like I think the thing that's cool about fanfic or or whatever. There's so many more ways to romance now, mm-hmm. and I think it's cool to like find like how do we can, like keep them here, right? Like how do we show them like the breadth of what the genre has to offer and you know, I mean, you said in your Kirkus interview, I think, like, you're proud to be the first queer, like, Berkeley book, but it's also 2020. Yeah. Right? So it's like, let's hope that there are more. Yes, yeah. yeah, certainly. Well, and, and also, I do always try to say along with that, that, yes. you know, this is the first, you know, queer female romance from Berkeley, but obviously not the first queer female romance. Like, there are right. people have been doing this since before I was born yeah and I don't want to I'm so grateful for them to having made space that I have been able to step into here yeah um but I think also that is that's another reason why I was more on the fan fiction side Mm -hmm. um was that you can find anything you want and many things you don't want (laughs) in fan fiction (laughs) um yeah so it was you know it's I think I sometimes feel even still right now it's easier to you know find like two women falling in love in fan fiction than it is you know on the bookshelf somewhere um and while there's a ton of you know while there are a ton of queer writers a lot of them go to smaller presses um Mm -hmm. or niche presses that are specifically for you know like lesbian romance or Mm -hmm. or anything like that which is great good for them (laughs) but it means that it's not necessarily, you know, you walk into Barnes and Noble and there on the front table is, is, um, you know, a story about queer people falling in love. And I hope that, I I think I I spent a lot of time while promoting this book, focusing on, you know, oh, it's the first one, it's the first one, um, sort of to the detriment of focusing on the book itself, um, Mm. you know, because it was so much, such a big deal that, you know, it was the first one that I wasn't, focusing on these the specificity of this story yeah um and I hope that eventually there are so many that you get you know that you have such a breadth of options that you know people who want a slow burn can get get their slow burn people who want sex on the first page can can get that you know like and I just can't wait for for that to happen and for that those to be 
not not as hard to find as they are now. You know, certainly, right. certainly all of these sort tons of these stories exist. Um, but for sort of traditional publishing to and and the big five, especially to step up and be like, yeah, we are going to put those into readers' hands. And we recognize that you don't have to be queer to like a queer story. Right. Um, and we're going to actually put money behind them and get them out there. Um, yeah. I can't wait for them to do that with tons of other writers. Yeah. <laughs> There was a great, I don't know if you've read a, a, a memoir I read this year was called In the Dream House. Yeah. And um, it's not a romance, it's right? It's not a romance. It's not it's, a romance, yeah, no. but it's it's a really amazing memoir of a woman who is in a relationship with an, a, an abusive woman. And, mm -hmm. but there's, and she talks a lot though about like sort of her search for queer stories like hers. Mm -hmm. And there's this one part and it like, I just keep thinking about it all the time where she talks about like as many queer stories as there are there are there are like the gatekeepers trying to say that they're not or that those stories don't exist or that they were like they're like subtext rather than text mm -hmm. and I think that's the part that's exciting about this time is yes these stories have always been here but to like to see more and more them being like just a part of everybody's romance experience Exactly. And not not just like sort of a sideline, I think is um, pretty pretty awesome. And it's yeah. nice to have have you be part of that. I'm yeah. sure it must be nice, really nice to be cool, part of it. Like, right? <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, I, I can't I can't wait to just have a whole there's there's a book coming out next year on my birthday ooh. that I haven't shut up about. Mm -hmm. Um called Honey Girl by Morgan Rogers that I am so excited for. That's a I think she's an astrophysicist Ooh. maybe um who gets drunkenly married in vegas and God, i, love I am so, and it's, you know it's a, it's a queer it's it's <laughs> yeah uh black a uh, black lesbian i think is the main character and i am just so excited um yeah. to read it and have sort of like glommed on to morgue as a friend and been, like <laughs> be my friend like i'm so excited to i'm so excited to have that community um and to build that community of you know traditionally yeah. published queer romance writers um because we're here and let's yeah you know let's extend the ladder to other people as well yeah for sure um both there as we wrap up the question i always like to wrap up with and it's kind of a hard one but it's oh, no. i think it's a good one it's not is like is there something you wished i would have asked you or that we would have talked about that we didn't oh. and i know i'm sorry it's like a weird hard question but it's like what do you wish what, well, like right okay what, what i want i'm gonna i'm gonna put you back on the spot with this. Oh, jesus um i know that you hate slow burns did like was it tough was the slow burn tough for you i'm yes. intrigued to know what yeah. yes yeah no i mean i think here's what i'll say though i slow burns are like a interesting thing in general where i i don't okay let me think about that I promise not to be offended. Like, yeah, no, no, some no, no. Like it was it, so sure, people, yeah, okay. sure. It was totally hard for me. And I was like, like, I'm not even kidding you. Like if I had been reading a paper book instead of on my Kindle, when the phone rang, I was like, I, I was just like, this is not okay. Like I cannot <laughs> believe the phone rang. Um, here's what I would say though, is slow burns. There's a difference to me between like a, like a real slow burn like this and the kind of slow burn that's just like interruptions for the sake of interrupting like that you know sometimes i think like the author has some sort of page number or sense right okay. of where this is going to be acceptable for them to like get it on yeah and i didn't i you know what even though it was like i was like look they could have done this earlier <laughs> i um that's my preference it didn't feel that way because it was so clear to me that like joe was never ever gonna make a move on her assistant yeah. And so until that was done, you know, and so in that sense, it felt really um, organic, I guess, to the characters. Um, here, here's my, here's my feedback if you really okay. want it. Cause I did text this to Sarah and Kate. I was like, look, okay. This is like a real spoilery. Cause we're talking about the, like the last five. Okay. So close your ears. If you don't yes, want like turn me off. Let's mute us. I really wanted joe to also have an orgasm on page like right that's fair like, that's fair like she like right like emma gets hers but i was like but listen <laughs> that's not how it works in romance like right everybody has to get off and well so, so the reason the okay, reason honestly that. is that the first time that those two have sex they do not each have one orgasm they definitely each have 
many yeah. okay. and i was like at some point i need like i need to i need to cut off the scene this this <laughs> scene can't just like keep going yes so that's honestly that's honestly why i you know like yeah right emma gets her <laughs> orgasm on page and then as i said the, yes these people exist a lot sure. longer than the than the text is yeah. um so yeah there's many many more orgasms that okay happen. well yes so that's why it's not it's not fair, fair enough but yeah it was just, it was so that was funny because i was like as i was reading it i was like I get this, I get like the, the slow burn is really driven by the story. Right. Mm, and yeah. it's I, mostly, if, I mean, I like it when, you know, I'm remember when you were like, we want it when they bang on the first page. I was like, sign me up for that one. Um, it's fine. I, like, I'm, tr I'm trying to do one of those, it, one of those soon as well. So I'll be your beta reader. <laughs> um, but I, I like, does that make sense? So I respect it. I, I do in the sense that it's like when it's driven by character and you really feel like, yeah, of course. I mean, it was clear yeah. to me that, Exactly. Yeah. And I, I totally understand that. I, I agree that there's definitely situations where sometimes it's like this, this doesn't have to like, well, this doesn't have right. to happen like this. Right. Um, but I, I'm glad to hear you say that, you know, it, it felt organic for the characters that the, to me, like, even though I did again, write the, write the fan fiction right. of what if they, what if they, kiss, <laughs> what if the phone didn't right. ring? Um, and I, you know, I did write all of that. I still, you know, knew what was right for the characters was right. what happens in the book. Right. Um, even if I, w I also would have liked for them to kiss earlier. <laughs> well, you got to make them kiss earlier anytime <laughs> you wanted to, right? I mean, I was like, this is where like the non-writer me is. I'm really at your mercy. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, so it is. It's interesting because, yeah, although I... I, you know, it's like not like my jam necessarily. Like, I don't, it's not like I'm... In, a raging asshole either. I'm like I get it this was right for these people you know um and it's good to know I'm glad I could ask you that I felt bad I was kind of like look yeah, yeah. no yeah I, it's, it's it's definitely because each of them have multiple orgasms that good. night and it would have just been too long of a scene at that point <laughs> you're like nobody wants this <laughs> yeah next time we'll do it next time actually in in my book too I do believe that I do believe they both have multiple orgasms on page actually so as it should be yeah, that'll be the next one yeah <laughs> do right by the women of the world <laughs> each 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 book that i'm writing actually i'm you know as i'm planning as I, I said i was sort of beginning to brainstorm what happens next if if everything goes the way that i'm beginning to plan each book will be slowly more will be yeah. more sex on the page in in every single one and it will come faster in every single one to the one that i said that i'm beginning to work on of I don't think it's first page, but it is first yeah. chapter. <laughs> I think what's interesting about that too is like we as readers, I think it's clear to me now that I'm like from Sarah, that like writing sex is the worst part. <laughs> like for readers, you're like, yes, like look at this. Like I, okay, maybe for me, for me, I'm like, <laughs> look, it's happening, right? And it's really interesting to like know that like that's really hard to do as a writer. So I, you know, I think that- and I, I think what's what's the hard intimacy part, right? Yeah, I think what's hard also is um, not just not just writing, you know, not just whose limbs are where and everything, mm -hmm. um, but also making each one matter. Um, you know, I'm I'm all for sex scenes for the sake of sex scenes, but I also I think and someone who I think does this well um, is Rosie Dannon, who has mm -hmm. the roommate coming out in September from Berkeley. Um, each of the scenes is each of the scenes of any sort of intimacy, uh, physical intimacy is important and and yeah. it, both important to the characters individually and important to the story as a whole and it it moves it along, um, and I think that is that is can be really hard. I mean, yeah. and and again, in addition to like who's right. to, have they taken off their pants oh god they already <laughs> took off their pants oh they never took off their pants and yet right so, like how you know. that happen or like uh, <laughs> joe's wearing skinny jeans and you're like that's a little bit of work to get out of those <laughs> right yeah so so i do i i do like as as though though it may not seem like it in this book yeah. i do like writing sex scenes <laughs> um my my editor actually when i first when she was first like we were first having like an edit Mm -hmm. conversation yeah it wasn't an edit letter it was an edit phone call she was very sweet and she was like you know oh like it's you know it is closed door this was at the time yeah. um that it was a closed door romance and she she recognized that each of the characters were were more private so was that an intentional choice mm -hmm. and I was like 
mm, not really. <laughs> like, I just, to be honest, I just wanted to finish the draft. So I just right. didn't write this. And as soon as, like, she was so polite about, like, was that an intentional yeah. choice? And as soon as she learned that it wasn't, she was like, I would like more physical intimacy on the page. <laughs> that is really funny. So you can, yeah. you can thank Christine, um, thank you, Christine. for, for Hero. getting, <laughs> getting yeah. the, uh, getting the scene actually on the page. Um, cause they're fun to write too. I think they're okay. fun to read and fun to write, even if, even if they're tough sometimes. They're fun to read for sure. <laughs> I think it's, um, yeah. So, I mean, I think that was, it, it's really interesting because there's so many ways in which, you know, every romance, I think I hope for every reader is a bit of a discovery, right? Mm-hmm. And, you know, I have read the Hollywood romance before, but, you know, there's so many ways in which this feels like new and interesting and exciting. And um, I, I was, it was really fun to talk to you tonight. So. It was. It has been absolutely fantastic to talk to you. Thank you so much for doing this. Well, and thanks um, to Love Sweet Arrow. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Right. <laughs> not, not only should you all buy my book, um, yeah. but you should specifically buy it from Love Sweet Arrow. Um, and they, ha- I sent them off a bunch of book plates so you can get signed copies from them. Cool. Um, yeah, I'm really excited about it. I went there last year, and they have. I'm a planning to go next little week. Store. Oh, I'm gonna nice. I'm I'm close enough and I'm ready to leave my house I'm gonna put yeah. on my mask and go book shopping which is you know all books and puzzles getting me through yeah absolutely absolutely so, so I think Marissa probably has to come back in maybe and turn or, us off or well, just, I think I think now that you're I a co-host if you end the meeting we are we'll just be done let's see what happens it's so, gonna be exciting see ya if it works bye everybody. <laughs>